In this lesson, we're going to study congruent triangles so that we can determine if shapes are identical or the same. Uh, we've talked about congruency of both lines and angles, and a congruent angle is an angle that's of the same measure. A congruent line would be a line with the same length. So the first thing we want to focus on is congruent figures. As you can see, these two figures, these yellow ovals, are congruent, they're oriented differently, but they're the same shape and the same size. Uh, that goes the same for all four of these different pairings down here. Now, when we look at these triangles, however, all of these triangles have differing angle measure, and they're all different sizes, so these are considered to be not congruent. So the easiest test for congruency of a figure is just to look at it and ask yourself, does this appear to be the same size and shape of a figure? It's important to indicate a congruent statement by matching up the vertices of the triangles with congruent vertices. For example, in triangle ABC, vertice A is the same measure as vertice F indicated by this one angle tick mark. Similarly, vertice C is congruent to vertice D. So in labeling this congruent statement, we can make the statement triangle ABC is congruent to triangle, and now we have to make sure that the vertices match up. So vertice A, as we just said, matched up with vertice F. So we start with F. Vertice B matches up with vertice E. So this is triangle F, E, D. Last one, C and D both match up. Now, this isn't the only way I could have named my triangle. I could have started at any other vertice. So I could have named this triangle B, C, A, which is congruent to B matches up with E, C matches up with D, and lastly, F. That's another way to do this. Again, a third way, I could have named this triangle CAB, which is then congruent to C matches up with D. A matches up with F. And B matches up with E. A good way to check for congruency of triangles is to check all of the important portions. You must have all congruent angles, and you must have all congruent sides to be a congruent triangle. So we can check. Angle A is congruent to angle L. Angle B is congruent to angle E. This leaves angle C congruent to angle K. Then when we talk about the congruent sides, we've got Side AB is congruent to side LE. It's important to note that since A matched up with vertex L and B matched up with vertex E, I labeled this in the same order, L and then E. And following through with the other two, we've got BC, which is the same as BC up here, matches up with E, K. And then finally, line segment K, L is congruent to C, A. The third angles theorem is pretty easy to understand. Basically all it says is if you have two angles that are congruent to two angles in another triangle, then the third angles must also be congruent. In words, that would say angle B is congruent to angle E, and angle C is congruent to angle F, therefore, or then, angle A must be congruent to angle D. And that's all it is. All right, we're going to find the value for X. So we notice here first that 105 degrees and this angle here both have matching tick marks so that indicates that they are congruent. 
So what we can say is that, well, this angle is 105 degrees. Now, using previous lessons, we know that the interior angles of a triangle all add up to equal 180 degrees. So we can write the expression 180 degrees is equal to 105 plus 48 plus 3x. Now we just have to combine and simplify to solve for x. 105 plus 48 is equal to 153, so once combining those like terms, we can subtract 153 from both sides, and we get 27 is equal to 3x. Divide both sides by 3, and x is equal to 9. If this problem had asked us to find the angle measures, we would then plug x back in, but since we are only asked to find the value of x, we are done.